Now we're going to get down to the nitty gritty of what Indians are all about. I still say we Indian people are believers in the truth. This is the way of life that was given to your people. You born an Indian, you're going to die an Indian. Indianness is a good life. You're facing an Indian this afternoon. Good Saturday afternoon out there, everyone. I'm Jason Salzman. And I'm Neely Soodle. And you're watching your number one source for Native American television news. Native News Today. And we are here, as you can see, on the mm -hmm. square in Altmaugi at the beautiful Council House Museum. And really, this is where it all starts for the Muscogee Creek Nation in this city. And how fitting that today we were here to see a wonderful proclamation ceremony between the city of Altmaugi and our own Muscogee Creek Nation. That's right, November 1st proclaimed Native American Heritage Month here and around the nation. So what a great month for us, a great thing to celebrate. Yeah, and things are going on all over the country uh, just like this. And really, Principal Chief George Tiger joining with alt Mulgee Mayor Stephen Baldridge talking about really the partnership uh, between the community and the tribe. And not only that, but ceremonies like this, you know, uh, mm -hmm. hoping to set a precedent to where other communities that share uh, their space with tribal nations can do thing, uh, things like that too. Oh, that's right. And they said this is the second year. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of communities do this, have this partnership mm -hmm. where the community joins together with local tribes. Mm -hmm. And we're pretty unique in that yeah. fashion. Very much so. It's great. And that's one of the great things about Oklahoma mm -hmm. too. We get to see this a lot. And uh, everybody out there, I uh, certainly hope that you are enjoying Native American Heritage Month. As we said, there's things going on all over the country, including the nation's capital, Muskogee Adala Festival going on up there. Oh, yes, mm -hmm. and I promise to bring back some great <laughs> stories yes. from uh, Washington, D.C., and for now, they're a secret, so you'll have to tune in. Absolutely, and you'll have to tune in next week, too, because we'll be showing you those and the ceremony here uh, marking Native American Heritage Month proclamation between the city and the Muskogee Creek Nation. But for now, we're going to show you our next installment in our Muskogee Creek Nation history series that Muskogee Media produced for our Muskogee Creek Nation mm -hmm. employees. It was something that the principal chief, along with the administration, wanted our tribal employees to know just who we were working for, the nation, and who these people are uh, that we call Muskogee Creek and that we are Muskogee Creek. So it's a wonderful thing to be able to provide this, and we hope you enjoy the next installment. Good morning, this is Sandra Peters. I'd like to, um, as we always do from the Muscogee Creek Nation, uh, seek our Creator uh, for a blessing upon this uh, particular study. Father God, thank you for the day. Thank you for calling it into order. Thank you for the purity of it and the sweet hours laid before us for our labor. Thank you for our nation and keeping our tribe strong and resourceful. May we today learn the wisdom of your perfect, divine, and ancient calling. You are the spirit of the spirits, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hello, my name is Sandra Peters from Travel Administration. And as we go into the content of our Muskogee History course, I would like to introduce a speaker from our archives. Philip Deere is a traditional healer from New Yaka Ground, Okima, Oklahoma who became a spiritual leader, an oral historian, and a storyteller. He speaks about remembering traditional values, Muscogee prophecies, and the care for Mother Earth. He brought attention in the 70s to injustices suffered by indigenous people of the Americas. He quotes this saying, life, the circle, a measurement with no beginning and no end. And now we'll hear from Philip Deere to tell you about the creation story. The word Muskogee is our original names and not the Creeks. The Creek word, the word Creek was never used until later years, probably somewhere in 1800s. But prior to that, we were called Muskogee. And from the very beginning of times, 
Our, word, our name Muskogee was a longer word. Muskogee is only a short word for our tribe. Our tribe's name was Masi Aksokje, which means those who possesses herbs. <clears throat> At one time, somewhere in the West, the earth opened its mouth. Three groups of people came out of this earth and <clears throat> went west. When they went further west, they lived in the land of fog, the land that covered with fog. The sun was never seen, or nor did they see one another in speaking to one, to each other. Because of the thickness of the fog, they never could see one another clear. One day, the wind came and blew the fog away. And the first animal that was seen by my people, they became that clan. And the first animal that was seen was the bear. So that group became the bear clan, which has a lot to do with tradition, ceremonies, that we have our ceremonial grounds. All these clans has a lot to do with it down to this date. The bear clan was originated there and many others, birds, deers, and all kinds of animal clans were originated there. Since the wind came and blew the fog away, the wind clan had a position in the tribe. I am of the wind clan. My father was a bear clan. And therefore, I was chosen to hold a position, not by the people, not by election, not by, by appointment does one become a medicine man. A medicine man is observed from his birth, own up until certain age, by the older medicine man. If he is qualified to become a medicine man, then he begins training at early age. Different herbs are told to him what they are good for. And as time goes by, he begins to pick up more and more from the older medicine men. And then he never goes out to publish himself or to announce himself. By his actions and by his looks, by his ways, he is judged as a medicine man. Then someday someone will come to him for medicine and he prepares a medicine for this person. Then later on, he becomes well known to the tribe. He never steps out to tell you that he knows this and he knows that. All of his knowledge is kept in secret in, in his heart. Even his children never learns everything from his father, even though he is a medicine man. <clears throat> Getting back to our story of the creation. In this land, everything was filthy. Everything was dirty. Nothing was clean. The only clean thing that eyes could see was the sun coming up from the east. So my people decided to go see where the sun was coming from because it was so bright and that was the only cleanest thing that could be seen. So they traveled east and they went as far as to a river, a red, thick, slimy river in which they could not cross. So they followed the river to another river that joined this river. In between the two rivers, there was a mountain that thundered all the time, and red smoke came from the top of this mountain. They stood there at this mountain and saw a post beneath this mountain that shook all the time. And by the directions of the elders, they picked out a motherless child and slammed it against this pole, and the pole stopped. And then they gained the knowledge of herbs. Four herbs was introduced to my tribe one known as the red willow root, the other snake root, and the other spice wood. Also, the small leaf tobacco was given to them at the foot of this mountain. Here they begin to possess the herbs for healing and for many other things. Here they obtain the first fire, which was given to them by the Creator. Then they went east again. They took the pole with them, and the pole gave them directions which way to travel. 
And there is no telling how many years, maybe hundreds of years, they traveled. Camping at certain areas and following the directions of this pole, many customs and traditions that we have today were picked up on this journey. <clears throat> While traveling east, whichever way the pole fell, that's the directions that they took. And they traveled all the way to the east coast. Every morning, it was a custom by my people that they get up before the sun came up because they were going to seek, see the sun. Going to the mountains, they stood on the top of the mountain. And in ancient language, they cried out, Go Hashida, Go Hashida, which means, where is the sun? And that group of people became the Kasista people. And we identify these people today. Their descendants live around the vicinity of Okmulgi. Some three or four hundred or maybe more of the first people's descendants still live with us now. We want to thank the Muskogee Creek Nation archives for the video of Philip Deer. I'd like now to go into some of the migration patterns uh, into North America. Our creator taught the ancient Muskogee the currents are the passageways through the ocean. We never lost our fire in which their spiritual knowledge and wisdom was passed from generation to generation. The Europeans or the Spanish believed that if you sailed far enough, you would fall off the face of the earth. Now Columbus, who was a Christian, was informed by our ancestors that there was a water route or a highway to the continents and that was the earth was round and not flat. These currents or passageways run consistently over the oceans. The currents are fed by the winds and brought our ancestors to North America through these highways. The Muskogee have always maintained their fire, their faith, and the spirit through the Creator's order in the universe. And we want to thank the uh, College of the Muskogee for putting together the curriculum for us today. Uh, I hope you enjoy the information. We will go through the table of contents for you so that you'll have an idea of what we're going to be studying today. We'll be discussing uh, some of the pre-removal, some of the background of the Muskogee people, uh, the Creek Confederacy as it was uh, in the early, early days, uh, the features of the historic Creek town, the locations of the Muskogee towns and the matriarchal society that it was and the clans. We'll be talking about some of the creek trading and the treaties, uh, some of the land secessions that we uh, also uh, gave up during these times. Uh, we're going to be discussing some of the outside influences and effects of the war, uh, some of the forced removal information we're going into Indian Territory and arriving in uh, Indian Territory. Uh, we'll be discussing some pre-war between the states and the effects of that war uh, uh, on the Muscogee Nation. We're going to be talking about the rebuilding after the war and uh, we're going to be s discussing Creek schools and political parties, uh, some pre-allotment and the effects of that allotment, those that oppose the allotment and pre-statehood. We'll also be discussing the early tribal government, uh, the 1867 Constitution, uh, considerations relating to our Constitution at that time, uh, proposal for an Indian state and pre-statehood, uh, the Oklahoma Indian Welfare Act, and the contemporary tribal government. We're going to be discussing some things like that. For you that are not history buffs, we'll try to make it uh, interesting uh, as well as uh, uh, complete history for you. Um, we're going to be discussing our tribal constitution in the uh, 1970s uh, with uh, Chief Cox, the tribal government under the new constitution and the differences between the 1867 and the, and the 1979 constitution. And we'll also be discussing the principal chiefs since 1971 and our tribal operations uh, today. And now we're going to discuss the pre-removal period of the Muskogee Confederacy. The Muskogee have always been in the traditional homelands in the southeast for thousands of years. Uh, Spanish explorers traveled in the region. They were impressed with the Muskogee's uh, 
good-looking people and large towns and prosperous countrysides. Uh, the earliest uh, with Swanson and Bartram and some of the travels, uh, they mentioned how handsome the Muskogee people were. The men were tall and, and uh, strong, and the women were petite and small. Uh, they ate the very best foods, vegetables from the fields, and they ate herbs. Um, they were prescribed from their medicine men to live lives of, uh, of happiness and love for one another. Uh, they also were forgiving people, and they had a servant's heart. Those are the things that traditional people understood. Um, the archaeological time periods were the Swift Creek through Mississippian period, 100 A.D., and the mid-late 1500s A.D. For you that are Christians, the 100 A.D., of course, would be uh, less than 60 or 70 years uh, from the time of Christ's crucifixion. However, our people go back to ancient times prior to that period. The Swift Creek Woodland period were where the mound builders began and the complicated stamped uh, pottery, ceramics uh, that you see. Uh, they were uh, during this period and the Mississippian mound builders uh, who made the Georgettes and the shell tempered ceramic ware, copper ware, and complex sedimentary villages. Uh, our copper ware was what the Muscogee Creek people used for decoration in their jewelry. Uh, they did not have uh, the silver at that time. That came later with the Spanish when they arrived. Uh, there was the Cusa chiefdom and also from chieftains of the Tolova. We had mother towns and daughter towns. There were red towns and white towns. The red towns uh, primarily were war towns and the white towns were peace towns. In the 1700s, Europeans started calling the Muscogee Creeks because they resided near rivers and streams and creeks. You can see on the PowerPoint uh, um, the setup of a Muscogee village uh, you can see that the town square consisted of an, an open area surrounded by terraces and banks, uh, which was representative of the creek's ability to incorporate culture into the design. You can also, also see the circular mound top with a rotunda, where um, uh, primarily the leaders of our tribe uh, would situate their homes uh, their grandparents, their sisters or their brothers, they were leaders and those that were relative to them uh, also had uh, homes that were built on uh, top of rotondas. The square terrace upon which the public square stood, you can see that there also uh, the river, uh, as you see, running through the village and uh, uh, there is many fish traps on those rivers. If you go to Etowah uh, in uh, uh, Georgia, uh, the Etowah River uh, will show as many as 100 fish traps on that river and the six-story high mound that's built there by Muscogee people. Uh, you can see that the residential buildings uh, in Creek Towns mirrored the organization of the public square also. The family plots that you see there consist of small compounds of up to four homes and there may be more. Family plots um, uh, also had probably a small garden uh, which they uh, gathered their, their crops from, but they also had on the other side of the river, generally speaking, a large, large agri area that was a communal uh, garden for all the village uh, and all of the people to um, uh, receive vegetables from and to work in those fields. Uh, they had large fields of corn, beans, squash, and other vegetables, and they bartered uh, much with other tribes and travel long distances to barter uh, for other items from other tribes and to uh, give their vegetables away. The locations of the Muscogee towns uh, were, uh, as you can see uh, on the uh, slide, uh, the Upper Creeks, they lived along the Coosa and Tallapoosa rivers in Alabama. And many upper towns were close to Fort Toulouse and supported the French. The Upper Creeks, uh, did intermingle with the French. The French were the first to come into our territory as white. And um, many of our uh, Muscogee people intermarried in, uh, to the French people. And uh, we have many uh, of our uh, ancestors today that have
have Creek names like Charlie Lesarge. The Lower Creeks, they lived along the Flint and the Chattahoochee Rivers in Georgia, and many Lower Towns were friendly to Florida and were friendly to the Spanish. The Seminole Nation, which speaks the same dialect that we do in Muscogee, were part of Muscogee people. They were more of a, uh, a traveling uh, group that would, uh, was an offshoot of Muscogee people. They have the same language uh, and the same dialects. The social structure uh, that we had of our nation as we speak of it as today. Uh, it was a matriarchal society and we also had clans. Um, it is not unusual to see uh, clans from many parts of the world today. We have uh, the Irish clans and we have tribes that are in Africa. Uh, we have tribes uh, all over and some of the tribes uh, around the, the world have lost their identity. But in the Muscogee Nation we have been able to keep our uh, identity as Muscogee people with clans and tribes. The women were considered the heads of the household. And within that Creek society, women held a most prominent place. Females as head of households owned the homes and the land. And the towns consisted of groups of houses owned by women. Their daughters built houses on family land or nearby after they were married. And they retained their mothers uh, clan. Creek clans were dispersed through several communities in each town containing members of several clans. The clan's identity influenced where members lived, as clan members' houses were generally located together in a household group. We're going to take a break now and we're going to continue with our next video. There's a story I heard hundreds of times growing up. The story about the day my grandpa disappeared. I grew up in a world of songs. I always think of the songs really being the spirit of something. There's a story. They are the same songs our ancestors sang on the Trail of Tears. They carry the grief, but they also carry this great love that works the same way at death. There was one little drop of blood on the back fender. And his glasses was on the dash. And no sign of him. As they searched, you could hear these songs echo through the forest. I didn't realize what that would lead me to, the whole rich story of American music history that had never been told. What would you say is the first American music? Our histories are not written, they are spoken through stories. They are told through our songs. I want to talk to that man, but he's gone. He's gone somewhere. When we sang these songs, we were waking up God. Magasam Gadat, Ibufanga, Nagi, Adigat, Punhayadi, Omega, Azai did it Omis. Dial Snop, that's true. Throughout the generations, our elders have taught us to preserve, share, and more importantly, protect the abundant natural resources we have here in Oklahoma. We are the original environmentalists and protector of these resources. The Muscogee Creek Nation believes tribal and state governments must work together to ensure future generations will have clean air and clean water as the ultimate legacy. What is good for Oklahoma tribal nations is good for all Oklahomans. Remember, tribes are truly the original Oklahomans.
Looking for your next 18-hole adventure? Then take a look at Fountainhead Creek Golf Club. Nestled in the beautiful confines of Lake Eufaula State Park, large sloping greens and well-placed bunkers characterize the Muscogee Creek Nation's Floyd Farley design course and offers a fine test of skill for any golfer. Stay up on all the latest gear and equipment with a visit to our pro shop. Have lunch at the turn at the Clubhouse Grill. We're waiting to accommodate you at Fountainhead Creek. Give us a call at 918-689-3209 or visit fountainheadgolf.com to book your next round. Fountainhead Creek Golf Club, close to home, far from ordinary. We believe if you teach a man to fish, you can feed him for a lifetime. We believe that transitioning convicted citizens back into our communities enhances public safety. We believe that every citizen, even ex-prisoners, are important and are capable of change. We believe in reclaiming our citizens and investing them back into a culture that embraces healing and restoration. We believe in reintegration. I'm Principal Chief George Tiger of the Muscogee Creek Nation with my good friend, Anthony Phillips. As a consensus All-American, an academic All-American, and a national champion at the University of Oklahoma, Anthony knows the importance of balancing the athletic and academic arenas. That's right, Chief. Statistics show that student athletes are more goal-oriented and are higher achievers in school. Success requires a balanced approach and plenty of support. The Muscogee Creek Nation supports our student athletes. I pledge to embrace and educate offenders in an effort to stop their abuse. I pledge to all women to love them, protect them, and teach them that violence does not belong in our communities and is not our tradition. I pledge to take full responsibility for myself and the women and children of the Muscogee Nation. I pledge to work courageously and audibly to fulfill this pledge for the rest of my life. <laughs> And that'll wrap up another episode of Native News Today. We certainly hope you enjoyed taking a look at the continuation of our history series there and definitely uh, being with us here at Native American Heritage Month and can't wait to show some great things from D.C. next week. That's right. I will bring back at least two stories that really tie into the D.C. area mm -hmm. and then our time at Muskogee Adola there. So It's going to be a lot of fun. I know you guys are going to do a great job and uh, can't wait to see it and also show the folks at home the ceremony here today, the proclamation mm -hmm. between our Muskogee uh, Creek Nation Principal Chief George Tiger and Old Mulgee Mayor Stephen Baldridge. If you can't catch us here on CW, we love it when you tune in Channel 19 every Saturday, but we also know that everybody can't be in our viewing area and some folks access the internet. Go to YouTube, check out our channel, or you can go to the Creek Nation homepage and click, a, uh, click on us there take you to our YouTube channel as well or check us out on Facebook Twitter we're all out there doing we're things everywhere. yeah we're everywhere. <laughs> we're everywhere you gotta hit social media these days that's right that's where you find out and keep that's where you can keep up with us at. absolutely that's absolutely right you don't want to just see us on Saturdays what are those guys doing during doing during the week we're out there and about and, mm -hmm. and seeing everyone and getting all these stories so with all that being said for Neely Sudal I'm Jason Salzman I want to thank you all for watching us this week we'll see you next time on Native News Today <laughs>